bless the law on this good Friday. I just wanted to read a quote, which is what I was looking for in my phone, from Heidi Baker, well-known missionary, passionate believer and follower of Jesus and lover of people. This is what she says, rather than being purpose-driven, I prefer to be present-centered. All our efforts in God's kingdom must originate from the place of rest and the place of his presence. That's awesome, isn't it? And I think that's how she lives her life because she runs at a million miles an hour and uh, does incredible work. So, Heavenly Father, we commit this morning to you. We thank you for the wonder of what Jesus has done for us. I don't think we will ever adequately understand the price and the cost. But we thank you that we can, by grace and by the work of the Holy Spirit, we can enjoy the blessing of sins forgiven. We can enjoy the blessings of new life together. And so we just want to thank you for that. As we open our hearts to what you want to do this morning, as we remember all that Jesus has done for us on that cross of Calvary. So we put ourselves in your care and in your hands this morning and ask for your sovereign blessing to be upon what we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Place 
What could separate me now? Cause at the cross I bow my knee Where your blood was shed for me There's no greater love than this You have overcome the grave your glory fills the highest place what could separate me now you tore the veil you made a way and you said that it is done you tore the
Who is 
Let's just keep in the atmosphere of worship. Just let's worship, keep worshiping, keep worshiping, keep praising Him. He is the one who's made the way. He's the one who shed the blood for us that we have a way into the Holy of Holies. Let's just celebrate who He is. Let's just worship the King. We worship you, King. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We are so ever grateful, Lord Jesus. The incredible sacrifice of your Son, Lord Jesus. We are forever grateful, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You've made the way, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, you made the way, Lord Jesus. You made the way, Lord Jesus. Fear of worship. Just worship. Just worship. Jesus. 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 Thank you. You are the Alpha. Lord 
Jesus, we just thank you as we come to the word, Lord Jesus. We ask your presence to rest upon the word, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, as we declared, as we opened the service, it, we center ourselves in your presence, Lord. We center ourselves in the very presence of God, Lord Jesus. And we do everything that from that place of rest, Lord. As we come to the word, Lord Jesus, let your presence just fill us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have a special uh, person who's going to come and read the Bible verse for us today. Shay wants to come to the front. Um, uh, so I'm reading from Isaiah 53. Um, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him; nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that was brought that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed we all like sheep have gone astray and each of us has turned to our own way <laughs> that and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth he was led like a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent so he did not open his mouth by oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer, and though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has, suff has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by the, his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured his, out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Thank you, Shay. Okay. It's interesting, this passage, uh, I mean, it's a very familiar passage to us for those who've been in the Lord for a long period of time. But it's interesting that this passage has sort of two rhythms to it, for one of a better term. The rhythms that you see was from verse 4 to verse 8. Surely he bore our griefs, he carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was, bru he was wounded for our transgression, he was bruised for our inequity, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Can I pause there for a sec? Because I think there is a, uh, there's a little bit I want to explore in that. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. 
if you ever want to confront a bully, that's the worst that you should run to because what that effectively says is Jesus was bullied like nothing so we could have peace. And if you want to look at the whole revelation of how Jesus crucified, you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were the, his, uh, his own race, his own people, rose up and said, crucify him, crucify him. When he was offered Barnabas as a different offering to Jesus, they still were, clo still were very focused on crucifying him. And he, was, uh, he, main, he got that abuse. He got abused all the way through, and then he found peace. So if you ever want, if you're ever in a circumstances where you're getting bullied, that is the worst to run to, and it's the sanctuary to run to. He was chastised. Anyone who rises up against me, against what I'm doing in context of bullying or determined to bring me down or determined to destroy me, he was, he was chastised for my, for my peace. My peace was upon him. Sorry, that was a sidetrack, but I thought, just thought it was important. All we are like sheep gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before Shearer's line. He opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare in his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. That's the first rhythm. The first rhythm is all about him, uh, him taking the worst of us and taking it upon himself. The first rhythm is all about him carrying our burdens, our weaknesses, our failures, our abuse, our curses, our things that we carry as a slave, uh, as a slave to sin and exchanging that and taking that upon him and giving us peace, giving us health, giving us wholeness, clearing us from inequities. But the second rhythm starts to take place in verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he has done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. If the first exchange is what we did wrong, he took on. The second exchange is what he did right, we take on. There's two exchanges going on. If the first transaction is a transaction of what we did wrong, he takes on. The second transaction, and as verse 9 starts to articulate it, he was, he, he, they made his grave with the wicked, but with, with the rich at his death, because he has done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. We get to take on what he has done right. In effect, verse 9 to verse 12 is all about his righteousness and how we take on his righteousness. And so zooming in on 9, if you think of the way that the cross is being dealt with, when Jesus says it is finished, there's a number of things that unfolds in the passage. And that passage is, explains verse 9 a little bit more. And if I could have Matthew 27, I think verse 51. There's, let me explore that in the way this pro prophetic word has been realized. I think it's Matthew 21 verse, sorry, 27 verse 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two, top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks split. So as this is as soon as Jesus has yielded up his spirit in verse 50, these are the two immediate events that takes place. But the third event is in verse 52. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And verse 53, and coming out of the grave after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. So the graves were broken, and he, the, they were still inside the graves, but the graves were broken, and he, they were being released from the grave. So when this passage said they made his grave with the wicked, what's remaining after that, people who were raised, are the people in the grave. And therefore, he was surrounded by wicked, and he was surrounded by all the wickedness of people who died before him. The righteous was raised, the wicked remained. Isn't it extraordinary? Isn't it extraordinary that Christ, when he died and when it said he was finished, 
immediate reaction is for the graves to echo and the righteous to open up. That's the immediate work that he has done. And if you go to verse 57, I think if I remember correctly. Yep. Now in the evening had come, there was a rich man from Arameth named Joseph, who himself had become a disciple of Jesus. Did I do 58? And this, this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. When it says he was rich at his death, he was buried by a rich man in his rich grave. Contrast. The contrast on the one side is that Jesus has been through all this terrible stuff, uh, injustices, all of that, and he dies at the cross and he is he takes on all our sins and iniquity. As soon as he dies, things unfold. And the first sign of his righteousness comes through. And the first sign of his righteousness is he was not buried with a pauper. He was buried at rich at his death. And the reasons I explained in Isaiah 59 verse 9. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. His purity got him a grave with the rich. His purity and his perfection got him a grave at his, at his, at his death, a grave with the rich. Isn't it? Uh, that baffles me. If you think about all the stuff we talk about wealth, we always talk about it in, in a limiting context and in the context of what uh, even the scripture declares, right? We talk about the fact, don't pursue, don't put your heart against rich, don't put your anything against the richness. Pursuit of richness is against the pursuit of Christ. And that scriptures are all true and all what God has said. But a sign of the righteousness of Christ is the rich at his death. Isn't it extraordinarily even contradicts the whole scriptures that you, you hold fast? The righteousness of God helps to prosper. And there are many verses that talks about it. Proverbs 21, 21, he talks about how the upright are in, in a state of prosperity. The only difference between their prosperity and the wicked prosperity, it's not instantaneous. And I'll, um, someday I'll go through that. But today I'll just want to focus on Jesus and how his resurrection has worked through that. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and he and he was put to grief when you make a soul of his offering he shall see his days he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand when god sees his seed he shall prolong jesus's days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the labor of the soul and be satisfied by my knowledge my righteous servants shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquity, therefore I will divide a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. And he poured out his soul unto death, and he numbered with transgressors. He bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for transgressors. If verse 9 to verse 12 is all about his goodness, us receiving it, his righteousness, us receiving it. But it talks about his righteousness. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. His righteousness will justify many. His righteousness will bring, ju bring justification for many people. He will break through the barriers of all the stuff that they think of, and he will break through it. Romans 5, I think it is. Romans 5, verse 15. He says this. Sorry, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through that one man, much more we should, those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Will reign through Christ, through Jesus Christ. Through one man's grace of the gift of righteousness. He's given us a gift of righteousness. He's exchanged He's taken my bad stuff and put it on himself. 
and in exchange he's given me his good stuff and by that righteousness we will reign in life through one jesus christ we are not limited by the sin and the pervasiveness of sin we are limited by how much we believe in the righteousness of god and how we appropriate that into our lives and how we make it real in our life and how he will then release that righteousness over us if i do proverbs uh i think it's proverbs uh, yeah, Proverbs 14.34, if you jump to Proverbs 14.34, there's another verse here which, given that election time, I think it's worth talking about. I'm going to be, get into trouble anyway, so might as well get well into trouble. No, no point doing it partially. The righteous shall exalt the nation, but the sin of sin is a reproach to many people. Yeah. Did it anywhere say the righteous laws exalt the nation? just righteousness shall exalt the nation did it anywhere say any of the laws of the land will exalt the nation it's us it's us who exalt the nation it's our righteousness that will exalt the nation if you want to see that played out abraham when he was praying for interceding for sodom and gomorrah says to god if you find five people who are righteous will you burn the city down and god says no i won't Five people's righteousness versus 300 people's or 400 people's sin. If you contrast that five people's righteousness with 300, 400 people's sin, the five people's righteousness outshines the 300, 400 people's sin. Our righteousness outshines any sin this nation commits, any laws that this nation commits. Our righteousness should outshine everything that is done by the evil one because our righteousness is like a lamp to light onto the mountain that everyone sees it and goes through it so proverbs 14 34 is very clear that our righteousness is central to that romans 15 17 says that it's essentially what i just read out is if you compare the death and the pervasiveness of the death as a result of sin and the corruption of sin there's an equal and a greater force that's working in us and the equal and the greater force that working in us is the the righteousness that works in us and works in our lives and when we make that shine and we make it shine in the presence of people that righteousness will overpower any sin any darkness anything that rises up against the knowledge of christ and will declare that you are righteous and in that righteousness god's mercy god's kindness god's grace god's love god's perfection will manifest itself and it will get bring us breaker get us breaker there is no circumstances in the scripture where righteousness yields to sin and Christ, when we exchanged righteousness with us, he also gave us that favor. Can I do two more scriptures just to, just to share a little bit more on the, um, on the power of righteousness? Proverbs 10.32. Sorry, I probably didn't give it to the at the back, my fault. Proverbs ten thirty two. The lips of the righteous knows what is acceptable, the mouth of the wicked what is perverse. The lips of the righteous knows what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked what is preserved. I'm gonna make a, a statement. The righteous are advocates. The sinners are critiques. If you want to be righteous, you need to learn how to be an advocate for one another, advocate for Christ, advocate for one another. If you're working yourself from the position of righteousness, your lips and your mouth will be advocating for things that are God's and things that are each other's. It works in favor of one another. It works towards the favor of Christ. Uh, lips of uh, the unrighteous and the sinners are what is called wicked and what is perverse and they are critiques and the critiques this world will uh, go through so if proverbs 10 1032 is anything for me don't become a critique become an advocate become an advocate for one another become an advocate for christ first and foremost 
but become absolutely an advocate for one another. It just talks about in, uh, when it talks about judgment, when you judge one another, when you judge a brother, you're sitting in judgment of it and you're not part of the body. You eject yourself out when you start to move in places of judgment. You eject yourself in when you start to move with voice of advocacy towards one another. And it, it is important for us to become a voice of advocate. Can I do Psalm 512, one more benefit of righteousness? For you, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you surround him as with a shield. You, O oh Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will surround you, surround him who is righteous as with a shield. God, when you move in righteousness, will give you abundant favor. And his favor is a shield that will protect you. It's as if it's a weapon of defense. The favor is a weapon of defense that God will use to protect you. Am I preaching a gospel of prosperity? Absolutely not. I am clear that even righteous will go through trials and temptations and all of those things. What I am saying to you today is those things will happen. But if you maintain yourself as righteous, those things will always be temporary and always be to the glory of Christ. I am not preaching to you a gospel that you don't have trials in it. I'm preaching to you a gospel which Christ has done and has shifted us into a position of righteousness from a position of sin, a right position of blessing, not a position of curse, a position that he has paid his significant price and he has given us him as an exchange for everything we have done wrong. And in that part of that exchange, God has released such incredible blessing, incredible righteousness that works through us. Uh, if, if last Sunday was about celebrating the triumph of God and the fact that miracles are just around the corner, today is all about celebrating your righteousness in Christ. And when you celebrate that righteousness in Christ, and there are about 40 odd verses I can go through one at a time that talks about the benefit of righteousness and the benefit of working in righteousness. When you believe in that work of righteousness, you shift into a realm that is different. And it's a favor that shields you. It's a voice of advocacy for each other, not a voice of condemnation of each other. It is a voice of grace. It's not a voice of condemnation. It's a voice of love. It's not a voice of uh, voice that uh, brings anyone down. It's a voice that binds us together, deals us, brings us closer together as a family of God. It's not a voice that seg uh, segments us. So as we come to the communion today, I want us just to celebrate the fact that he, he has made us righteous. I want us to celebrate the fact that he is Christ risen over us. Can I have the First Corinthians 11, I think, verse? First Corinthians 11. For I received from the Lord which I delivered to you, and that the Lord Jesus, on the same night which he was betrayed, took the bread. Can I have the next verse? And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Next verse. In the same manner, he took the cup after the supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This is... This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This next. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. As we come to the communion, I just want to, I want to bless the bread and have the bread and the wine together. But I want to invite you to come and collect the cup and the bread as we just play some music. Um, and then we will have the bread and the wine together as we break, and we will proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Can I invite you to the communion table?
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we stand in honor of who Christ is and declare and proclaim who he is? Lord Jesus, as we declare the bread, Lord Jesus, we proclaim what you have done at the cross for us, Lord Jesus. We proclaim that you have dealt with our sin, dealt with our inequity, dealt with our curses, dealt with everything at the cross, Lord. We proclaim that you have given us wholeness and healing, Lord. We proclaim the fact that you have made us perfect. In, you've taken all our imperfections and exchanged it for your perfection on us, Lord Jesus. We proclaim that you shifted us from a position of sin to a position of righteousness. You shifted us from a position of curse to a position position of blessing. You shifted us, Lord Jesus, into being your son, Lord, into being more than an overcomer, Lord Jesus, a conqueror in Christ Jesus, Lord. We discern that body and we take this bread today, Lord Jesus, in proclamation of that. Take, eat the bread, it's a body broken for us. we take the wine lord jesus we proclaim all the work of the blood of jesus that is done over us first and foremost it gave us great access to you lord jesus it elevates us into the holy of holies into the very presence of god lord jesus it elevated us into the righteousness of who you are lord it cleanses us as white as snow lord jesus it uh, helps us to seize all our dead works and moves us into living works lord jesus it helps us to overcome the work of the enemy lord jesus because you declare in your scripture he we overcame him by the blood of the lamp and the word of our testimony lord it also declares the fact that it speaks of a better things than blood of abel lord speaks of righteousness speaks of your holiness speaks of your love speaks, speaks of your kindness speaks of your mercy and speaks greatly of your justice lord i thank you as we come across the blood lord as we drink this blood we proclaim all of that in the name of jesus Jesus 
faded all all to him my own sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as snow cause Jesus paid it all all to him my own sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as That's the song that's on our hearts as we leave your house this morning. Lord, help us, even in moments of crisis, even in moments of difficulty, help us to remind ourselves by the Spirit that you paid it all. There is no residue. There is nothing left over. Lord, the enemy is defeated. He has no judgment rights against us. It has been paid. As the book of Hebrews says, the handwriting that was against us has been paid for. It's as if, Holy Father, that part, that sheet within the book has been torn out because of the blood of Jesus. There is no record of sin against your name. There is no record of sin against my name. It has been wiped clean and we need father help us as we leave your house to walk like that not in arrogance but in grace and power in the wonder of your favor for all that Jesus has done for us we are free we are free so father we thank you for this day we thank you for the tremendous plan of salvation. 
we thank you for the awesome sense of what Jesus Christ did on our behalf. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're blessed.